So, hi from my side. I'm Jürgen. Uh, I'd like to thank Aaron very much. He done a pretty good intro into the top 10, which I'm presenting. Uh, let's, let's dive into it. Uh, we have an agenda, uh, the introduction, um, what misconceptions we are facing, uh, con considerations to be made uh, about the OWASP top, uh, top 10 pro uh, Internet of Things top 10 project and a short walkthrough because we all know the risks, I think. Uh, Gartner says uh, we will make 26... Uh, 26 billion devices by 2020. It's a 30 fold increase. So, quite a little, uh, a, a big market to explore. Um, yeah, it's with a 1.9 trillion uh, economical impact. So, there's quite big money to make and uh, big security uh, issues of we are facing. There's a misconception uh, with IoT where all people say it's all about the device. It's not just about the device, it's about the network and the clients. Uh, the problem we have is there are so many uh, surfaces, just like Aaron said, and each of these need to be evaluated. So, so we have some things like the cloud, mobile, uh, mobile application, uh, we have network interfaces, we can, uh, we can go down to the uh, network stack, for example, uh, just as we heard at Aaron's presentation. Uh, most of them aren't using encryption at all or authentication. Uh, there's poor physical security and we have the good old USB ports which like to be exploited. We, with the with the OWASP uh, IoT Top 10 project, we like to review all the aspects of the Internet of Things and all the risks uh, risks that come uh, that ca will come with it. Uh, we divided it in uh, divided it into ten uh, categories of risks, just like the original OWASP Top 10 for the web applications. Uh, it should cover the entire device. There is no uh, specified device we are watching at. This is a generic approach. Uh, yeah. The first risk we are facing is the uh, insecure web interface. We have a threat agent. Uh, who could be basically anyone who's having access to the web interface. Uh, the exploitability is quite easy, as you may may know. Uh, the security weaknesses are pretty easy to detect, mostly with automated tools. You can cover a pretty wide uh, wide areas of, of problems. Uh, the technical impact could be uh, hard and the business impact is, is uh, depending on the business mostly. Uh, it's a difference if somebody hacks your uh, fridge at home or if he's hacking a fridge uh, for a big vendor for example. How can we test this insecure web interface? Uh, we, we can test it with account enumeration. Uh, as you may see here, uh, the account john at does not exist. Oh, so let's try the next one. Uh, 
we have weak default credentials like admin admin or admin password all the <laughs> bad passwords we are we are looking at uh, the credentials are exposed in net Network traffic, for example, if there are two devices in the network, they send uh, their passwords in plain text. Uh, we have cross-site scripting, SQL injection, session uh, with yeah all the problems. Uh, we have problems with session management. We can fix sessions, for example, and log out people from their accounts. If you, for example, try to recover their mail for three times or something, their account get locked. How to make it secure? Uh, the OWASP IoT project um, gives a guideline for people who are manufacturer, who are developer, or, or for even for consumer. The first thing I would do if I get a device like that, I change the default credentials, for example, and try to explore it would be the best thing. We have insufficient authentication, authentic authorization where we have an attack vector uh, that is average. Mm, it's not too easy to exploit it, but possible. Uh, the detectability is easy and it's quite common. We have a hard technical impact and business as usual. It depends on what you're doing with this IoT device. How to test it? <clears throat> it comes with a lack of password complexity. Uh, basically, nobody is checking your password complexity on these devices. Prove me wrong. <laughs> uh, we have poorly protected credentials, uh, lack of two-factor authentication if it's uh, uh, needed in this application. Uh, the password recovery procedure is mostly insecure. Uh, we have privilege escalation by just putting other uh, roles, for example, in the get parameter. Oh, wait, no. And most of the devices have a lack of role-based access control. How to make it better? Uh, I need a good storage for my passwords. So I need to store my passwords secure as well as making strong passwords. Uh, provi uh, providing uh, two-factor authentication for, my, for the customers. Insecure network services. Uh, there are problems with the network services, as uh, Ivan just said, uh, with uh, <laughs> JSON, JSON strings that could be exploited. Um, the exploitability is average. Uh, it's uncommon, but we still face them. Uh, the de detectability is quite a hard bit of work and the technical impact could be uh, data loss or denial of service uh, and uh, uh, could go to other de uh, could go over to other devices and the business impact is uh, depending on your business how to test them we see vulnerable services. They have, uh, buff, uh, for example, buffer overflows like in the 90, 90s. Uh, we have open ports via UPMP, uh, exploitable UDP services, denial of service, denial of service via net 
uh, network device fuzzing, and I think the biggest problem is that all the devices you usually don't have only one IoT device in your home, for example, or at your company. Uh, you have more of them, and they could become easily uh, den distributed denial of service if someone likes to get into them. How to secure them? Only expose the ports you are, you are using. Make uh, reduce basically reducing the attack surface. Uh, UPnP is a cool thing, but not in IoT devices. UPnP, yeah, no. <laughs> UPnP only makes problems. We have a lack of uh, TLS, of transport layer security, or transport encryption. Uh, what we are facing here is that if somebody tries to man in the middle these devices, they all get stuck. We, uh, we have the problem with uh, unencrypted services via the internet and uh, unencrypted services via the local network. We have uh, poorly implemented SSL TLS, uh, just like we had with Heartbleed and most most of the most of the IoT devices doesn't even update uh, their firmware. So they are still unpatched. Yeah, how to how to make it secure? Uh, I can refer you to the OWASP IoT Top Ten pro, uh, project where you can read it uh, for your need, where it's described for manufacturer, developer, and or consumers. We have big privacy concerns. For example, if someone uh, followed the uh, uh, the news with Samsung and their TVs, where the CEO said uh, nobody should talk private stuff in front of their TV. <laughs> yeah, how to test it? Uh, Basically, you should watch the uh, net uh, the network traffic to see if some some data uh, is transmitted over the over the net. Uh, they collect personal data like date of birth, uh, home address, but they don't even need them. How do we make it secure? We can't make it secure as consumer, I think. Uh, it's a big uh, gap uh, that's missing from the side of the manufacturer or the developers that they, uh, they are producing it. Uh, just like Aaron said, we need to make sure that there is a protection level for our consumers or our customers and I think it's going into the right direction but we have to still work on it. We have insecure cloud interfaces just like I said before we have many of these IoT device, uh, devices working together and they are connected together and the clouds as a central uh, brain is is one of the main is one of the main parts that could be exploited and and misused
So here we also have a account enumeration, no account lockout, and the credentials could be expose, uh, exposed in network traffic, or they are transmitted poorly protected via the internet uh, via the net. How do we make it secure? Uh, we should use uh, industry proven protocols to communicate with the cloud. We should use a proper uh, account lockout, for example. Uh, we could test it to uh, SQ, uh, SQL injection. Uh, we could test it against cross-site request forgery and all those stuff we all we all know from the OWASP uh, top 10. The same is with the mobile interface. Uh, we also have here the problems like no account enumeration, uh, no, out, no lockout, and the traffic is exposed uh, in plain text. How do we make it secure? At this point, I like to refer it to the uh, OWASP top 10 project because it's mainly made for this. With IoT devices, we are facing another problem. We don't have the possibility to configure uh, security. Security should be, in, in my opinion, it should be a plug-in to, uh, to a, piece of, a piece of software or to a piece of hardware. I like to choose my own security options and how hard they hit or something. Uh, most of the devices don't have a granular permission model or password security options or monitoring and logging. Or if they have logging, where does the log go? Uh, if you're programming IoT devices, make sure that uh, you're separating normal users from administrative users as well as the developers. Uh, I'd like to once more uh, refer to Aaron, where he said with the UART and the JTAG. Yeah. We have also the problem with uh, insecure f uh, software and firmware, where the firmware could be uh, updated via DNS hijacking or something else, where you can easily override the firmware. Uh, the firmware before it get uh, before it get updated, need to verify itself as valid. So we should use the uh, in the in the computer world common uh, hashes to verify, for example, the the validity of the firmware. Or most of the devices doesn't even support up the uh, self updating. That's also a problem. How do we make it secure? I think it's it's a kind of process to, to, to implement security into these devices because to make secure updates, you can't you can't lay security over it. You must live security with uh, the product updates. Last but not least, the poor physical security, uh, where you can exploit, for example, the USB stack just by uh, making big uh, HIDs on the USB port. For, some, uh, for example, or with uh, ma malicious SD cards. I think if you have the device in physical, 
it is already hacked. So most of the most of the problems we are facing here is to, uh, this device could be, uh, could be hacked, but uh, it shouldn't infect other devices, for example. How do we make it secure? Uh, that's we, uh, that's a problem of the mostly of the hardware vendor we are using or the developer is using uh, because it's a layer that, uh, it's a layer beneath. So the, mostly the manufacturer is here is in the liability to give. Uh, uh, a guarantee, for example, that his device is proven, for example, against certain attacks. Yeah, that's it, and I'm done with my talk.